Good Tuesday afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Journey Taylor and here's what we have coming up for your news at noon. First, an international challenge that demands collective action. A look into the newly signed multinational national pact that will affect how much you pay for goods and services. Plus, a federal judge orders an indicted Southwest Arkansas sheriff to give up all of his law enforcement duties and now tells him to stay away from the sheriff's office. And two organizations are teaming up to open a new facility and bring the city of Jacksonville new services to help provide support to child abuse victims. Now we have all of that and more coming up, but first a look at weather. Meteorologist Simone Thomas joins us. And Simone, how's it looking out there on this Tuesday? Well, Journey, we're starting to see some of the cloud cover move in, mainly high level clouds at this moment. But as we continue through the day, you're going to see more of those clouds moving in from west to east. Temperatures today a little bit cooler than where we were at this time yesterday, mainly in the 40s across central Arkansas, 45 right now in Little Rock and Hot Springs, as well as Pine Bluff, Arkadelphia, just a smidge warmer, 46. Camden, only location up to 50 right now as we continue through the afternoon looking to see more in the way of these clouds. We'll start to see more overcast guys as we approach sunset highs today. Going to be a little bit cooler than yesterday and more of the upper 40s to low 50s looking to hit 50 overall here in the capital city. Coming up, we're going to be talking about the rain chances looking to impact the Christmas holiday. So make sure you stick around. Simone, thank you. The Pentagon says Houthi rebels in Yemen have launched more than 100 drone and missile attacks on at least 10 merchant ships in the Red Sea. Now, the attacks have been prompted shipping companies to stop using faster trade routes through the Red Sea, meaning you could end up paying more for just about everything you buy. Skyla Henry reports. Secretary of State Lloyd Austin met with sailors stationed in Bahrain and thank them for giving up their holidays in order to carry out their mission. You're here to keep the international sea lanes open and to keep global commerce flowing freely. Bahrain is one of 10 countries to sign on to the U.S. newly announced pact designed to protect shipping in the Red Sea. Houthi rebels in Yemen now control the entrance to the Red Sea, and they have launched drone and missile attacks on cargo ships heading to the Suez Canal. About 15 percent of all global trade goes through that choke point. Now shipping companies are suspending operations in the area, rerouting their ships all the way around Africa, costing time and money. Dr. Ian Ralby is a maritime analyst. The Red Sea, which is one of the critical choke points around the world, is being inhibited by the Houthi aggression. And that is going to affect the price of every good, from food to clothes to cars to all kinds of household items, all the way through to our energy supplies. The Houthis, which are backed by Iran, say they're carrying out these attacks in retaliation for Israel's war against Hamas, which is supported by and aided by the U.S. American ships already in the Red Sea have been busy shooting down drones and missiles aimed at Israel, including 14 on Saturday alone. These reckless Houthi attacks are a serious international problem, and they demand a firm international response. Yemen has promised to continue the attacks until Israel halts the war in Gaza. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. In a developing story, we're learning more information after a woman was shot during a robbery at a North Little Rock Waffle House on Friday night. Police now sharing a picture of the alleged suspect. Investigators are looking for the man you see here on your screen. He's accused of shooting an employee while robbing the restaurant on Camp Robinson. Now at last check, that victim was taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. If you know the man in the photo or have any other information, call police. A hot spring county sheriff currently facing an indictment has now been ordered not to show up to work. Federal Judge Barry Bryant made a ruling that Scott Finkbeiner's only remaining authority is over payroll. By agreeing to give up his duties as sheriff, he appears to have avoided a renewed push by federal prosecutors to jail him before trial. The sheriff was arrested in charge with obstruction of justice and concealing a crime last month. Finkbeiner pleaded not guilty to those charges and denied any wrongdoing.
In a new development, Attorney General Tim Griffin has rejected a proposed ballot title that would expand government transparency in Arkansas. The rejection follows last week in which Griffin denied a companion proposal for a constitutional amendment. Griffin says both proposals had, quote, partisan coloring and contain too many ambiguous or unclear terms. American Citizens for Transparency says it will submit new drafts for both, and they say they're prepared to appeal to the courts if Griffin rejects more of their attempts. Entergy is warning customers to be on the lookout for scammers. The utility company says it sees an uptick in criminals targeting customers this time of year. A couple of things to remember if you get one of those calls. Entergy will never call demanding immediate payment over the phone. Only pay your bill online through myentergy.com. And Entergy representatives will never show up at your door unannounced. If you suspect something is a scam, contact Entergy. New services are coming to the city of Jacksonville to provide support to victims of child abuse. Community leaders announced yesterday their plans to turn an old elementary school into a resource center. They found that more than 300 of their victims are coming from North Pulaski area. Executive Director Jennifer Long says the idea to partner with Jacksonville and provide a local resource right in their community is what the children deserve. They shouldn't have to travel 30 to 45 minutes away in a community they don't know, in a community they don't know where to get services at. They don't need to be going that far, and we're not doing those children right when we make them do that. Long says the new facility will offer forensic interviews, mental health, and 24-7 service. The entire project will cost $1.5 million, and so far they've only raised $500,000 for the first phase, and they plan to raise more to offer medical exams. Now they expect to have the facility up and running by mid-February of 2024. About one in eight women who have given birth experience symptoms of postpartum depression. Now the first pill for women with PPD is available. Danya Backus has more on how it works and one mother's story on getting the help she needed. Caitlin Pratt says her mental health worsened after the birth of her son, Kaysen. I feel like my anxiety went through the roof. I had absolutely no motivation to do anything. I had a newborn baby who obviously needed me and all I wanted to do was sleep. Three months later, she knew she needed more help. She saw an ad for a clinical trial testing a new treatment for postpartum depression and enrolled. Her symptoms improved within days. Full of energy. I was like bouncing off the walls. I was going to sleep and I woke up feeling rested. Usual treatment could be with antidepressants, which take weeks to work. Now the FDA approved prescription drug called Zerzuve is available. The first pill to treat PPD. There is such a great need for fast acting antidepressant drugs in all types of depression, but particularly in the very vulnerable period where you have a postpartum mother and baby. Dr. Samantha Meltzer Brody with UNC Health ran one of the clinical trials. Research showed the medication taken for 14 days improved symptoms at day 15 and as early as three days for women with PPD. For any mother who is feeling sad, blue, in a way that is persistent or interfering with functioning, changes in eating or sleeping or feeling hopeless or having any thoughts that life is not worth living, these are all things that should make you contact your doctor right away. It's really important to take care of yourself, not just your baby. Your baby is what matters most, I know, but they also need a happy, healthy mom. Kaysen is now three years old. Caitlin says she's grateful she got the help she needed. Danya Backus, CBS News, Los Angeles. Well, researchers say the most common side effect of the drug is some sedation, but since it is taken once a day at night, the side effect for most people is very mild to moderate. You have an opportunity, a new opportunity to receive free food to help during the holidays. The Watershed Agency kicked off its several days of holiday food giveaways today. The nonprofit is giving away boxes of food today, tomorrow and Thursday. The drive up event starts at nine and wraps up at three. So there's still time to stop by today. Anyone in need can pick up the food at the watershed on Springer Boulevard on a first come first serve basis. You will also need to provide two forms of ID to pick up a box of food. 
And speaking of giving, you can also help those in need. As many of you know by now, we're really pushing to help the Salvation Army with its Angel Tree Project. If you'd like to help us out, we've made it easy for you. Our THV 11 virtual traveling kettle. You can see on your screen here, all you need to do is text the word give, that's G I V E, to 501 376 1111. The money donated now not only helps around the holidays, but year round. Again, text the word give to 501 376 1111. Millions of Americans are gearing up for what experts say will be a record high for holiday travel. Now, AAA prepares for the influx in flights with hopes to avoid long wait times. And we're staying dry today, but as you see, the clouds starting to move in. And we got some rain coming up this weekend. We're going to talk more about it coming up after the break. <laughs> 